Thank you for joining me on Career Conversations with Service Express. Recently, I was able to sit down through Zoom and talk with the uh, director of our talent acquisition team, Lindsay Foley. Lindsay has been with us for five years now. She's amazingly talented. We're lucky to have her here, and she has some great insights around recruiting and uh, tips for those of you seeking new opportunities. And it's certainly interesting times to be talking about something like that. And so we want to talk about resume do's and don'ts um, and how to build your brand as a job seeker and some other topics that we hope uh, you will find interesting. So uh, watch out over the next few weeks for different topics that will come up that we'll dive into. This week, we'll uh, start with some fundamentals on how to get you started on building your resume and uh, some interview tips for you. So I hope you enjoy. Let us know your feedback and tune in every week uh, to see what we come up with next. Tell me, just give some quick tips uh, for anybody who's gonna be watching this, just some best practices around building a resume. You've seen thousands upon thousands of resumes in your career before Service Express and, and while here. And just, you know, what are just some, some best practices that you would share with people around building a resume? Definitely don't be afraid to have it go longer than a page, especially if you've been in your career for a while. Uh, I find that when people try to stick to that one page rule, then it gets like condensed and unreadable almost, and you lose some of the detail in there. Obviously, you don't want it to be 10 pages. Don't be afraid to um, highlight some things and have it go onto another page. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, the big things that I look when I look at a resume are what's your skill summary? What do you feel like are your strong points that you're bringing to a company? Uh, highlight some of those in the very beginning. And then also put a technical summary. I think nowadays every company is using different systems, different um, programs, you know, to do their jobs. So you want to make sure that people can see what you're proficient in, but just kind of understand your level of ability. Um, you know, for our sales team, we talk a lot about using CRM, the sales force. So even if you don't have direct experience with a certain technology, companies want to see that you that you can learn quickly and adapt to to different systems. And then I really feel like, you know, obviously. Uh, every company is a little bit different. Service Express is not trying to recruit for a specific educational background in any of our jobs right. necessarily. But I do think there's value in putting your education or any of your certifications on there. Things that are differentiators for you that have, that you, you know, we're big on learning. So any learnings or trainings or seminars or conferences, um, it's always good to put on there. Um, and then from the standpoint of sort of putting your job description on there i think it's just good to kind of keep those as, as action things things you actually did don't be um too caught up in the language but make sure that your bullet points you know you put your job you put your position and then you kind of put the things you accomplished and sort of right. the, the action things not the you know was part of a team of so and so well, okay what did you do on that team you want to make those those things known so that someone looks at your resume and can read it and go, okay, in a minute or less, I know what this person did with their life and their career and where they're at and what they're looking for um, from that high level, certainly dig in in an interview, but just people want to be able to understand what your skills are and where you're coming from. That's to get you in the door, like mm -hmm. to get the interview. Sometimes I'll interview people, final interviews, they're like, hey, do you, here's, a, here's a clean copy of my resume. I'm like, I, I don't need it. I have this. You're already in the door. I don't, the resume... Yeah. The resume yeah. is done. Now we're talking and, yep. and we're discerning for there. So you really want to make those things pop, right, on a resume. Yep. What about what about yeah. somebody who's putting together a resume maybe in college for an internship or they're just out of college yep. and they said, you know, gosh, I haven't had I haven't had the experience. Uh, what, what would you say they put down? Maybe they've had jobs through college, but, but not that apply specifically to what they're looking for. What, what would be the things they put down and highlight? Similar things, I'd still put kind of their skill summary, obviously their education, if they're in college, what they're going to accomplish when they graduate or what, what, what their degree would be in. But then I think it's about um, definitely putting, put your jobs in there, right? You still want people that work ethic, you've, you've had a job, you've got some professional acumen, you've, you know, you're, you're not afraid of, um, you know, hard work and, and those sorts of things that you glean when you see someone's whatever job it may be. Um, so definitely still put your jobs in there, even if they're not related to the job you're going for. But then I'm always a fan on when, um, resumes for those in college of putting um, the, the um, like class summary or the relevant course summary that you've had of the work that you've done. 
So that's a big one. And then also including um, like key projects you may have worked on during during school, whether it's a capstone project or something where you've got some, some real world experience, adding those on there. And I think as a, someone in college, a volunteer summary is always good. Something that shows what you're interested in outside of yeah. work. Right, good, excellent, good, good. What about when, uh, so got a resume done, you're in now interviewing. What are some interview do's and don'ts that uh, based on your experience uh, that you've seen that you could share with people? I would say, from an intern perspective, I would say just a, something that I know can be hard when you don't have a lot of work history um, to talk about what, what you're passionate about more than maybe, you know, you, you can explain the jobs you've had throughout college, but sharing what you're passionate about, what your goals are, become a little bit more relevant than maybe the tangible, like, I created this at my company or I executed this. So it's okay to talk about in some of those here's what I'm excited about and here what my goals are in any interview, but especially when you're an intern, sharing sort of that up front, I think is good because you'll be able to see if that internship is going to align with what you're, what you're trying to get out of it. So, yeah. so there's that kind of side piece, but I'd say in an interview, um, you know, I, I always, I know this can be different for different kinds of people, but try to keep it to your point, authentic, be yourself. Um, I know there's the nerves that go with interviewing, but, but try to share, um, your true, you know, perspective on things. Um, uh, definitely talk in terms of what you accomplish uh, right. and also share the teams you're a part of, but someone who's interviewing, it wants to know your examples, how you did things, what you did. Uh, we want, obviously want team players, but we're, you're getting hired to do a specific job. So right. sharing those accomplishments and examples are key in an interview. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree because we that's one of the look for us, right? Is it all did you sort of ride the wave of what a team did, or we want to know your your accomplishments within that team uh, that yeah. you had? And I think I'll add to to what you said is adding details to the story, right? So the little I'll, I'll share a little gotcha for people, right? When they're interviewing that, when we're interviewing you, we're looking for details. Details to us authenticate a story means. It has a higher degree of probability, and there's studies on this and books that we've read that it's true, and you can recall and be specific. When people are not specific and can't recall details, it makes us skeptical that they really did it. So when they say, like, I'm really good at customer service, and, and I'm all about that, and be like, well, good. Tell me a time that you went above and beyond to serve one of your customers. Give me an example. And the ones who really are can write, they got the Rolodex, right? They dig in, and they can give yep. a specific example of it in the details are there and they tell the great story the ones who aren't can never really get into that just kind of keep talking theoretical or philosophical around it and you yeah. go like you we dig in a little bit and if they can't do it you know, it's funny because sometimes people get frustrated with us, with us when we dig in and keep digging in and they can't give the details they don't like that and i think right. they don't like that because they're not being authentic and, and really maybe are exaggerating what they did and i think the people who get energy from that are the people who really did it because you're saying, talk about yourself and tell me. And like, it's, it's real. So it's energizing. Uh, so yeah. I think to, to me, I would add that to the do's and don'ts, like mm -hmm. be prepared to be specific. I think that I always, with that old, you know, adage that like work isn't personal. I always kind of laugh at that because it is, it's one of the most personal things you do. And if it's not a fit and you're not being your true self, then, you're not going to be great at your job. You're not going to, you're not either going to love your job or you're not going to um, throw yourself in like you're saying. And, and especially at a growing company like Service Express, we got to right. adapt all the time. So right. if you're not in it and you're not passionate about it um, and you're not, to your point, we know we're not for everyone. And that's why we put all of that stuff out there about us because, you know, we often hear the, you know, drinking the Kool-Aid, but I had a conversation with someone the other day that I was like, you got to drink the Kool-Aid at the company you're at. Otherwise, why do you stay there? You know, the you've got to be yeah. all in. Yeah. Right. So. Exactly. Exactly. And we want your authentic self. We want everybody to be true to who they are when they're here. That's what, that's what creates uh, different thoughts and perspectives and makes us stronger together. The things that we require, though, are teamwork, service-oriented. You know, I have a no prima donna rule. You know, no, no big egos. That's all for yourself. We have egos, but for the, the company, for the team, for what we're all trying to achieve together, no, I'm better than anybody else type of thing. Those are the things that we require uh, and we yep. look for here. But, uh, you know, as far as that, from as different perspectives and diverse perspectives as we can get from people, that just makes us so much stronger. Yeah. 
I think diverse minded thinking, right? People that yeah. aren't afraid to even go against the grain. I mean, we have meetings sometimes and I even find myself being like, I'm sorry to say this. And you're always like, don't say sorry. Like, yeah. what is that perspective? So I think, gosh, we grow so much from being different and sharing different um, ways to get somewhere. I, my favorite thing, I always tell people about Service Express talking about cliches. I'm always like, it's really okay to make mistakes here. It's really okay to mess up. I mean, you, you got to learn from it, but right. it's good when we try different things and we, um, you know, sometimes they work great. Sometimes we got to evolve and, and learn from that. Um, but different minded thinking and people that bring different perspectives, I think, especially even on um, the talent acquisition team, like has just helped us to, to grow and think, um, think of how we can do things more efficient, but also be innovative and, and um, as a company evolve, but also in the industry evolve, so that right. we're not falling behind in any way. I might challenge you once in a while in those areas too, right? That uh, Yeah, it's good. Which I know yeah. you love, you love. And I, I do. think that it's, um, yeah, I think it's the truth, the, the values and the beliefs that we have, again, about how we treat each other are the things that we can't get away from, but you can have those yeah. same values and beliefs and how you treat each other, how you service the customer, how you work together and come at those from all those different perspectives. And that's where I think the real, this real strength together, the stronger together that we talk about.